Hello, APUSH candidates. I'm Ms. Mateo, and I am one of the APUSH teachers. I've been teaching the course for over 10 years. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Bradshaw. I also have been teaching APUSH for a couple of years now, ever since 2007. Uh, we want to discuss with you a couple of our expectations for incoming 11th graders as to what it is you can expect if you enroll in APUS history. So as you can see at the top of this slide here, uh, the general course description involves, we cover everything in US history from the opening expeditions of Christopher Columbus in 1492, all the way up through present day, if at all possible by the end of second semester. Um, as far as whether or not you are a qualified candidate for AP US history, if you take a look at the prerequisites, we have some general recommendations. If you're a 10th grader who is currently enrolled in AP world history, who is earning either an A or a B in the course, we would consider you to be qualified candidates for AP US history. If you're a student who's currently earning a C in AP world history, we would ask you to discuss with your current AP world history teacher whether or not they believe you to be a qualified candidate. If you're somebody who is struggling in AP world, maybe CPUS history might be a better option for you. However, if you're a student currently enrolled in CP world history, we would love for some of you to take on the challenge of AP US history during your 11th grade year. So as you can see, if you're a student in CP world history who is currently earning an A, you might be a likely candidate to take on AP US history during your junior year. If you're earning a B, then maybe discuss with your CP world history teacher whether or not AP US history is the right course for you. When you enroll in your classes for your junior year, we strongly recommend that juniors who are enrolled in AP US history also be concurrently enrolled in AP English language. There is overlap between the two courses regarding topics, regarding what it is that you're reading, and of course, an emphasis on writing skills. As far as our grade category breakdown, you'll see that the bulk of your grade during your junior year in AP US history would be constituted under two categories, tests and quizzes and essays. Our tests and quizzes largely consist of our weekly chapter quizzes. AP US history is rather fast paced and we cover one chapter in our textbook per week to which by the end of the week, we will be quizzing over the contents of your reading from that particular chapter. Every unit consists of different time periods in US history. There are a grand total of nine periods and nine units of study that we have within our curriculum. That also falls under that 40% on your tests and quiz category. When we have our chapter quizzes, we do not offer an opportunity for retakes because they are reading comprehension quizzes. However, on our unit exams, if you fall below the 70% level, there is going to be an opportunity for students to hopefully improve their grade up to that 70% mark. Under our essay category, that's 40% of your overall grade. This largely consists of the three different types of writing that you are expected to do for AP US history, the DBQ essay, document-based question, the LEQ essay, the long essay question, and the SAQ, the short answer questions. We generally will cover one area of these writings every two weeks. And lastly, under our assignment category, making up 20% of your grade, there is nightly reading you're expected to do and note-taking that you're expected to do or some other level of assignment to prepare for the next day's worth of class. And that's going to make up 20% of your overall grade. And as you can see, as the last part of the grading scale, as far as makeups are concerned, uh, generally speaking, minus extenuating circumstances, Ms. Mateo and I do not accept late assignments. So meeting your deadlines is very important to both of us. And Ms. Mateo would like to talk to you about the last component on expectations. All right. So how do you know that APUSH is a great fit for you? First of all, we do require a summer assignment. The point to this is to find out it's like how you work with the textbook and um, as well as get additional information from an outside reading source. So again, informing you that there is a lot of reading in this course, as well as writing that Mr. Bracha had just discussed earlier. Um, when it comes down to the reading, it's a given. You're most likely going to be getting an hour to an hour and a half of homework per uh, day. So just making sure that you're aware of how much you're committing to this course. There is again, a lot of reading. As for keys to uh, success, 
interest in subject matter. Again, you want to love history. This is a class that we get to talk about in-depth topics that most classes don't get to go into. Um, also, you want to be able to have a good memory. You're going to be expected to memorize a lot of facts and events and how they coordinate with each other and how they affect one another. So again, memory is um, an asset in this class. Exceptional writing skills. So being successful in your previous English classes, those skills that you've learned in the past will impact this course. So again, you want to be able to already have a, a, a comfortable experience with writing and participation. You want to be comfortable with speaking in class so you can participate in the debates that we have. Um, again, one of the key courses is being able to talk about the important topics that we've had in throughout time and being able to elaborate with one each other and ex, uh, learn from each other and get ideas from different points of view. So these are all the different aspects that you should have in order to be a a well-rounded student in English. Hope to see you. Bye.